There are so many reasons why decision making has been fascinating for me. Maybe it's because I was surrounded by people who were incredibly decisive, who always seemed to know the right thing to do, or at least what they thought was the right thing to do. And so many times I saw their confidence as initially motivating and later saw it as stupid because those decisions weren't always good. And I really wrestled with indecision in my own life. And after becoming a Christian as a young adult, I started to get involved in some churches with some people who used language like, the Lord told me on a regular basis. And that was fascinating to me because I had had some spiritual experiences that I were aware were supernatural, but I didn't hear from God on a regular basis. I certainly couldn't say the Lord told me what to do in any given situation. So part of it was a hunger in my own growth and my relationship with Jesus to say, is it possible to hear from God? about the decisions of life on an ongoing basis, but also just awareness that I would be in positions of leadership in which the decisions I made would have a big impact on the lives of other people. That's an enormous responsibility. So I started, even before I got into ministry full-time, studying the scriptures to see biblical principles for decision-making. Then as I was working through, through my graduate studies, working on my Master Divinity, I, I had an opportunity to do an extended paper, a big term paper on a subject, and I decided to study the life of Paul as I saw recorded in the book of Acts and the decisions he made. Never did I imagine that that study would, would just really dive, take me much, much deeper. But as I did that, I was fascinated because it confirmed some suspicions for me. One was that Paul, yes, no question, he had supernatural guidance occur on a regular basis. But most of his decisions were recorded, at least by Luke, with words that implied he used his rational mind to make them. There was no vision or dream or, or voice of the Spirit that was telling him what to do. And, and so we have this balance in his life that I think is an important measure of spiritual health. Because as I've noticed, and even as I've gone on, both as a pastor and as an academic in the Christian world, I see people on two sides of the camp. Those who say, well, you know, God should give you direction for every decision you make, and others on the other side who say, no, if you think you heard from God, you ate something weird last night for dinner. There, there's got to be something different there. And so to say, is there a, a way to harmonize all of these? In addition to that, I started teaching a master's course right as soon as I got to Southeastern University on the subject of practical theology. And doing reading on the whole field of practical theology, this field has two different definitions that are overlapping one another. One is everything that you do in practice as a pastor, things like marriage and burials and services and leading people in worship and counseling on all those things. So it's sort of a big field. But there's another th area of practical theology that's emerged in recent decades that is instead a study to see how is God at work and how do we partner with him in his mission and what does he want us to do? And that third piece there suddenly clicked a trigger to connect with that other study and research I had done before. And it drove me deep to begin studying in not just the field of practical theology and biblical studies, but also other disciplines to see what they had to say about the issue. Things like decision science, psychology, philosophy, even neuroscience and how the brain works and how we make decisions. And as I began to put all of these together, I thought this might be a tool to help other people make decisions in their own life. If I came up with a model that would be easy enough to understand, yet comprehensive enough that could be applied in a variety of settings and situations. As I prepared this series and really gone through the content, I can think of several groups of people who will really benefit. First of all, all people make decisions, so it can apply to anyone. And certainly it's my hope if someone is not yet a Christian and stumbles on this and finds this, I want you to know making Jesus Christ your Lord is the biggest and best decision you can ever make. However, most people coming to this are going to be Christians and looking for a good model of Christian make, decision making to follow. And I can imagine people who are leaders of organizations who want to have a biblical model for leading their organization forward, whether they're pastors or leading a Christian organization or even a business leader or, or, or leading a, a secular uh, group, maybe even a club, all of these principles here work on an organizational basis in a tremendous way. However, the big 
biggest audience I see are just Christians, just Christian people living their lives, knowing that the decision whether or not to take the job is going to move them across country, whether or not to marry that cute girl who sits across the aisle, whether or not to switch churches, all of these decisions are going to make an impact on their lives. Making Big Decisions Wisely is set up in 12 video sessions. The first one gives you a basic orientation to the field of decision making and why it's important, how much is at stake when we make big decisions. The next session talks about the difference between fast decisions and slow decisions, when it's important to take the time and energy required to walk through a decision-making process like story shaping. The third session is the biblical background for the concept that God sometimes, but not always, gives us clear and specific direction in the decisions that we face. The fourth session then talks about a principle of what I use as a metaphor of lenses, of like glasses that affect how we see and understand the world and some of the things that affect us both intentionally and impulsively or intuitively and how those work together in the decision-making process. Then we go into part two, which has four sessions that lay out the four steps of the, of the story shaping process. Reading the backstory, that is determining what's going on, what's happening, why it's happening, what decision we need to make, what people need to be involved. Number two, catching God's story. What does the scripture say? Is the Holy Spirit speaking? What does the Christian community say? Three, crafting a new story. This is a real key point of the decision-making process. It lays out some specific steps. That is increasing the number of options we're willing to consider, then reducing those options to a manageable number, carefully weighing each of those, working through the process before finally making a decision. Then step four, telling the new story, which includes making a plan to implement it, determining how we're going to tell the story, who we'll tell the story to, and finally doing what we call proofreading, that is evaluating the story after it's been implemented to be sure things are going well, because sooner or later we have to go back through the process again. Then the final part, part three, includes examples and methods of how to use story shaping in personal decision making, in corporate decision making, in resolving conflict, and then finally some hopefully encouraging words to help you go out and live your new story. These videos may be especially helpful to you if you are facing a major life decision on your own, such as a career decision, uh, relocation decision, family decisions, uh, dealing with some challenges, even especially conflict. Uh, another thing is if you are leading an organization, especially if you are taking over leadership at, at, a, at a new time in a new season, learning to follow these principles early, especially those we lay out in session 10, can make a difference for you, the long-term health of your organization, how much your people love you and how much you love being their leader. If you decide to go ahead and watch the whole series and you take careful notes and you remember it, you integrate the principles of story shaping into your life, what I believe can happen for you is suddenly these things, they become overwhelming monsters. And some people, either they resort to the, just the quick decisions, not always healthy decisions, or you just run away scared because that monster of that big decision just makes you afraid. What this series will do is it will give you a tool that you can keep in mind. You're going to shape the story. You can take it on. You can read the backstory, catch God's story, craft a new story, then tell the new story. And as you live it out, you will see that what used to be a monster has now become a mountain that you have climbed and you have summited and you're ready to take on more mountains in your future. Well, I sure hope that you decide to purchase this course because your future will be determined. Your story will be shaped by the decisions you make. So the question is, will you have some good tools in your toolbox to shape the best story possible?